Hypertension is a common public health problem today. Today we find it between rural and urban population. In urban population it may be around 25% of the incidence and in rural population around 10 to 15%. It is really a problem which is menacing at a very high level. And you know control of blood pressure definitely brings the incidence of strokes and uh, myocardial infarction and uh, congestive heart failure. So it is very vital to control the blood pressure and you should have molecules which really help in bringing down the blood pressure. Besides lifestyle modification, exercise, diet, pharmacological therapy is also important. If person fails in lifestyle modification or diet and exercise, then we come to pharmacological therapy. Today, ACE and ARBs are the top class antihypertensive agent. We have found, we have studied ARB, especially Olmisartan, a molecule in treating hypertension. The study conducted was Vinover study for the Olmisartan molecule. And the number of patients studied were 8,940 and over the period of six months. Not only that, Olmisartan is a long-acting drug which remains for 24 hours and side effect profile is also better. There are no much adverse effects which we noted and even the normal population or the patients using Olmisartan have noticed no much adverse effects. It has no drug interactions as well. So Olmisartan definitely is a promising molecule today in controlling hypertension in India and all over the world. Of the ARBs, Olmisartan Medoxamil is one of the newer ARBs and in our clinical day-to-day -day practice we have learned that it is also one of the most potent ARBs in terms of blood pressure reduction. But what we have been lacking so far were Indian data regarding this molecule. In this context, the recently published Winover trial has been a very significant and relevant one. It is a purely Indian study done on Indian patients by Indian doctors and in Indian hospitals. It is a fairly large study featuring 8,940 patients of which about two-thirds were males. The age group was between 18 to 65 years in the majority but about 11% of patients were aged more than 65 years. Now in this study, Olmisartan was given in a dosage of 20 or 40 milligram either as monotherapy or as an add-on therapy on top of the conventional other drugs, the beta blockers, diuretics, calcium channel blockers or ACE inhibitors. Now irrespective of it being given as monotherapy or add-on therapy, in the trial period of 6 months where BB measurements were done at frequent intervals starting from 15 days, it was found that Olmisartan produced a progressive and graded blood pressure decline both in terms of systolic and diastolic period, uh, blood pressure over the six month period. So much so that at the end of the six month period, whereas the starting blood pressure was about 166 by 100, and 100 millimeter of mercury on an average, the blood pressure level achieved at the end of six months was on an average 130 by 80. This was indeed a significant decline achieved by a single molecule that was Olmisartan Medoxamil either as monotherapy or as add-on therapy. And what was even more impressive was that all this was achieved at a very good tolerance level on the part of the patient and a very low uh, percentage of side effects. Overall the percentage of side effects was about 0.08% and the major side effects that were observed were edema, uncontrolled hypertension, dizziness or vertigo. But as I already mentioned, the percentage of side effects was very low. Our results from the Winover study are in line with these previous observations. In addition, our study also evaluated the efficacy and safety of Polmisartan 40 mg per day and analysis of the six month data confirm the safety as well as efficacy of Olmisartan 40 mg per day. 
analysis of six months data also confirmed the safety and efficacy of uh, Olmusort and 40 mg per day in management of hypertension. The Winover study was an open label and non-comparative study design, a recognized and well-accepted limitation of all post-marketing surveillance studies. Post-marketing surveillance studies still provide valuable insights into the performance of the study drug in real-life clinical settings.